Hey guys, it's so one is here. Welcome back to another video. So yeah, today it is a new day. It is a new dawn for my channel. Like I know I've not uploaded in a while, um, but yeah, I'm making a stance and I'm back in the business. So yeah, as you can see, I've got nothing behind me right now. So yeah, my green screen arrived basically. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, like, I'm going to be using my green screen for these videos because um, I take up less space than the tutorials and, yeah, I feel that's important when you're dealing with, like, software such as this and I really want to improve the quality of my videos overall so that's just one reason why I've done it. But, uh, yeah, today we're here because um, I'm going to start doing Game Maker tutorials. Now, the reason I'm doing them is because I've learnt quite a bit of experience on the software and also, yeah, I want to share my knowledge with my viewers. So, yeah, I am using Game Maker Studio Professional. Um, it cost me about £75, I believe it was. Um, but it was in a half price sale. I got it in the autumn sale of a couple of months ago. So, um, yeah, I think it's a full price now of about $150, so it's quite expensive. Um, yeah, but I don't have a master collection, I've just got professional, and it just does basic desktop exporting. So, anyway, in this tutorial, um, I'm going to cover the basic features of a, like, a game maker game. Um, yeah, these are the exact sort of things you should be doing when you first create your games. Um, and basically, I'm going to cover all of them important nitty gritty bits. Um, we'll get some games going by the end of this. Um, I do have an idea for a game in mind. Um, it's a game that's been influenced in a way like um, MC Escher. Um, if you look at his artwork with all like optical illusions and stuff, um, it's not going to be based entirely on optical illusions. Um, but what I intend to do is like have custom drawn sprites and things, um, and basically everything is like pencil like graphics. So it's going to take a very long time to draw all the artwork and stuff for this game. Um, but yeah, there's going to be a lot of tutorials and stuff I can cover while I'm making it. Um, anyway, let's get into this. So first thing you, like you see on the screen is your game maker homepage. Um, I'm going to create a new project, just open a new tab, um, I'm going to change my directory and instead of saving it to the default game maker folder I'm going to create a new directory. So um, I've got a 4TB hard drive in RAID, um, yeah this is a, a new system I'm using right now um, and it's going to go in an entirely new folder um, under Warrenators actually. Um, but for some reason I don't know why you can't create folders in this thing so um, I'm gonna have to go back to my drive here and then create a folder like this. <laughs> um, reason I'm creating a folder for these projects though um, is because I want to have different version numbers so I can keep track of the things I do. Um, let me just name that game maker project. So now if I quit that and then quit browse again it should show up now so uh, Warren Haters Game Maker Project so there we go and just for a basic name I'm gonna call this um, yeah uh, pencil game like that I don't know just something simple we can think about a name for a game later um, but this needs a version number of v uh, one underscore uh, zero underscore zero like that. I use underscores between the numbers as they represent decimal places. But the minute I type a, a full stop in here, it, it won't work because. Um, it uses a full stop as part of a file extension, so it needs either dashes um, or hyphens as they're actually called or underscores so just make note of that um, if you make a substantial change to your game don't forget to save it under a different version number as well I'm going to be doing that quite a lot in the project um, and I'm also going to be making a new document which contains the patch notes for the game but yeah 
you don't need to worry about source control as well, that's basically a feature that's implemented for game design studios. Um, that essentially allows live editing of a game maker project for like, other people. So like two people can be editing the same project at once and it makes all the changes to the project live on like both files. So, but since it's only me, I'm not going to be using that. Anyway, hit create, and we're granted with the told game maker screen. So, yeah, I'm going to take a note of the time because I don't want to overrun with this video. But yeah, the first thing you should really do in terms of creating a game maker project is create a room because the room basically contains everything that your game has to function with. So right click rooms and then create room. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to settings and rename this to room underscore zero instead of room zero. I like to use underscores to separate words and stuff. Now I'll get more into this later but for the time being I'm going to set the width of the room to 1920 by 1080. I'm going with a 1080p resolution because it's pretty much a standard nowadays, 169 aspect ratio and I really want a full um, desktop experience for this game. Um, but the important thing is that this is the room size, not the size of the camera. The camera comes under views and I'm going to set the port on the screen to 1920 by 1080 um, later on when I've enabled the camera. Um, this is because, yeah, if I set the entire room to 1920 by 1080, that'll be the edge of which I can travel within the room. But I want the room to basically scroll around my character and follow it, but it's not going to do that if the room size is set to the monitor sort of, like resolution, should I say. Um, but yeah, leaving that, um, everything else is pretty much fine. I'm going to set the colour to like a different like grey, possibly a bit lighter, okay, um, and yeah, that should be fine in all fairness, you don't really need to do much. So that's his room anyway. Oh, actually, there's one more thing about the room I haven't mentioned, and that is the speed of the room. Now, this is very important because this is how fast your game will process time. If I set that to 30, that will mean that every step in the game is 1 30th of a second. However, I don't want that, I want it to be 60, which is the standard for an NTSC formatted monitor. So, which is 60 hertz, in matter of speak. But yeah, setting that to 60 will now make every step in the game 1 60th of a second. And that's important because it basically speeds up the game. Um, but not only in doing so, it makes it smoother at the same time. So that's an important thing. Right then, now that's this room sorted, um, I want to go over briefly um, the way objects work. Now, what objects do, they basically harmonise the things that, like, sprites and other things do within the game. Like, you can place code into objects and stuff. Um, like sprites for example, I've got two sprites here, SPR wall and player. I created these a moment ago. Um, player and wall are literally just basic images and that's all sprites are, they're just images. Why? They can be PNG, JPEG format, um, but yeah, it's objects which control sprites, and these can like be like controlled by certain things within the game. So, like, say I want to press W, um, I'll register a key press as W and assign it to that object which contains a specific sprite. Um, moving aside from that. Um, objects they've got different events now we're going to be using quite a few of these but the main ones are the create event step event uh draw and destroy in my eyes um, and maybe alarm 
But there is also other events than the ones you can see here. Like, there's other events, so like, say, an object goes outside a room, uh, say the game ends. Um, yeah, and you can even create user-defined events, and we might be even using them in the project. Um, asynchronous ones, they're basically for if you're using the internet, so like, Steam integration, like, or HTTP, um, stuff like that. Um, but I'm not going to go into too much detail about these for the time being. Um, and the way I want to close this video is just to say how, like, people do things, like, in different ways. Um, my coding style throughout these tutorials may never be the same as yours. Um, I just want to emphasize on that because you may have a better way of doing something to apply it to your project or whatever you want to do. Um, the thing is, um, there's multiple ways of doing things and in some cases like your own method might be better than mine. I'm just providing you um, information as to what I do in this situation. Um, but there's multiple different ways of doing things. Like, say for example, if you want a gradient in Photoshop, you can just use a gradient tool, but at the same time you could use a fill tool and then a brush on top of it that's got quite a lot of smoothing to create a gradient. Like, there's there's lots of ways of doing things, and it's the same in programming. Like, you could tell something to, like, declare a script, or you could tell it to, like, use a custom defined event within that object or something. There's lots of different ways of doing things. So, um, my code may not be to the same standard as what yours is. Um, that's an important factor in my eyes because um, although I'm going to try and stick to standards within these tutorials, they may not always be accurate and I'm providing no guarantee that that is the case. So, and as much as I want to provide helpful tutorials to you guys, um, there may be some instances where the information I provide may not be correct. Now, above all things, I want to avoid that, and I'll try to my best of ability to avoid situations like that by doing prior research in the process. So, um, I just want to get that out of the way, but in the next tutorial, we're going to be going into more detail about these events. And I also want to talk about collision and maybe get that started in a way. But I hope you've enjoyed this video everyone. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Um, I'm going to be posting these tutorials every Monday night. Um, and yeah, until the next one next week, I shall catch you guys later. So have a good one and peace out. <laughs>